So I've been living exclusively in Linux for two weeks now, and it's time to give you an update. So let's get to it. Now, again, I want to preface that living exclusively in Linux for me means using this laptop with Ubuntu Linux 12.10 for everything that I do on the internet. The only exception is when I edit a video. So this video that you're watching was edited in Windows. Other than that, everything I do is on this laptop in Linux. So last week I went over some of the hardware and that really doesn't have a whole lot to do with Linux, but it gives you a flavor of what I'm dealing with in my experience using Linux. So I'm going to continue with that just a little bit in this video, but then we're going to focus mostly on the software. Now, I don't know if I mentioned this last week, but after using this laptop, it reminds me how much I love matte screens, and I don't think I'm ever going to go back to a glossy screen unless it's a tablet. If they can make a matte screen tablet with a capacitive touchscreen, I'm on board. But as of right now, all tablets are glossy, so you don't have a choice. But as far as laptops go, I just love the matte screen. The one thing about this Dell, which is a Latitude D630, if you're not up to speed on my little experiment here, the viewing angles on this screen aren't that great. So let me show you. As you can see, you get a lot of distortion. To me, not a huge deal, actually, because when you're using a laptop, you're going to situate it that's best for your viewing anyway. Now, if it was a television, that's a different story because a TV, you need really good viewing angles because you could be sitting in different areas of the room. So for me, on a laptop, viewing angles, not that important because I'm going to situate it so that it's perfect for my viewing. And generally, a laptop is a one-person computing device. On rare occasion, you might share the screen with somebody, but it's not going to be for a long period of time, at least in my experience. In my experience, if I'm going to watch a movie, it's not going to be on a laptop, it's going to be on a TV. So for me, viewing angles on a laptop, very low priority. Now on this machine I'm running off of battery right now, I get about on just under two hours of battery life. I believe it's a six cell battery on this Dell, and that really has, again, no impact on the operating system per se. But again, I just wanted to tell you what I'm getting on this used, older piece of hardware here. So the battery life is definitely acceptable. It's just probably, I would say, just under two hours, depending on what I'm doing on it. Now, I don't think I covered it in previous videos, but down here on the bottom front, of the laptop is your speaker. There's three little holes there, and that's your speaker. Now, on this laptop, it is an older piece of hardware. It's probably seen better days, and it's a business laptop. It's not meant for necessarily entertainment. But the speaker on this laptop is not going to win any awards. The thing I like about it is that it's very loud. So that's always good. Better loud and distorted than so quiet you can't make out some words. I've had laptops in the past that the speaker was so quiet even when it was cranked up that it really, even though the laptop was really great, it ruined the experience because when you're watching something on there, you can't make out some of the words. So that really takes away from the experience. And I'm not the kind of person who wears headphones on a regular basis. If I'm going to listen to something, it's going to be out in the open. I do use headphones in certain instances, but definitely not when I'm watching video on a laptop. So the speaker on this device, very loud, but it does distort at times. So again, it's not going to win any awards. If you're an audiophile, you might have a problem with it. Personally, again, if I'm going to sit down and enjoy a movie, it's going to be on my TV, not on my laptop. My laptop is just for watching some YouTube videos here and there. When I go to the tech blogs, if they have a demonstration of a device, I want to, you know, watch the video of that there. But the distortion doesn't bother me at all. Now, if I was watching a movie and trying to enjoy it, it would be a totally different story. So I think that pretty much rounds out this hardware. The only other thing that possibly might be hardware related, I'm not sure, 
and it could also be software related, is the trackpad. At times, when I'm on a website, I'll be moving around the arrow here, and it will jump somewhere where I don't know. So, you know, sometimes if I'm doing work from home and, and I'm sending an email, I'll have to put the cursor in a certain spot. And when I do that, the arrow just jumps somewhere, maybe up to the top of the screen here or something like that. Doesn't happen a lot. I would say it happens maybe two to four times if I'm gonna be using it over a two hour period. In my anecdotal experience, it's happened to me. Not a lot, but enough to mention. So I'm not quite sure if that's a software thing or if it's a hardware thing. So that pretty much rounds out anything that could be hardware related. And I wanna go into some of my other experiences with using Linux in my second week here. Now, there were times when I wanted to put a program on here. And when you do that, you have a couple of options. You can go to the Ubuntu Software Center, which is here, and you can download a program and install it from there. Or you can go on the internet and install a program straight off of a website, just like you would with another computer. For instance, Chrome and Opera were installed off of the internet. Real simple process, most of the time. I found that sometimes, and I touched on this in my previous video, sometimes I'll run across something that I just don't know how to put on the device. And it's because there's different variants of Linux and there's, there's a lot of good things about open source and then there's some things that are somewhat of a drawback. When you have open source software like Linux is, you have a lot of great software for free, generally. Sometimes you pay for it, but sometimes it's for free. And there's something liberating about using Linux on the computer. Now, in the past, Linux was very much a tinkerer's operating system. But more and more, especially with operating systems like Ubuntu, it's getting a lot more user-friendly. And that's good. That's a good thing for the adoption of Linux. If you want to see Linux grow, you want the operating system to be as user-friendly as possible. Now, I know a lot of people hate Unity. I don't have a problem with it. I actually like it. But if you're used to different desktop environments, I could see how Unity is not going to do it for you. But on the whole, Linux gives you options, and options are a good thing. But options can also run into incompatibilities. And I'm the type of person who bites off a lot more than I can chew. That's why sometimes you see on this channel that I pump out a lot of videos and then there's times that there's a drought. And that's because I have a lot of things I like to do and it just so happens I don't have a whole lot of time to do them. So when it comes to maintaining an operating system, I like to tinker, but I also at times like to have things work pretty easily out of the box. So when I install a program, I'm not so interested. The, the thing about a program to me that's interesting is to use the program, not to tinker around to get it to work. Now, in my experience, I haven't run into a lot of programs that cause me problems to install it on the computer, but I have run into several of them. And like I said, I just don't have the time to devote to installing these pieces of software. So I tend to, if it gives me more, if I spend more than a, you know, a half hour on it, I tend to just walk away. Now, one of the great things about Linux is, is that you can find a distro that suits you. If you're very hardcore, you can find a distro that's very bare bones where you have a lot of control over it. Or if you're a more casual user, you can find a distro that is very user friendly. So it's actually easy enough for the common person, a lot more easy than it was several years ago. But if you like a challenge, you definitely can find a distro of Linux that's going to suit your skill set. Now, in my experience on this computer here, I sometimes do get an error message that pops up. It happens once in a while, maybe once per boot up of the machine. And it doesn't always happen on boot up, but it does happen during that session. And I generally just send on the report. Now, some people have told me that, you know, since I'm using 12.10, it's not the long-term release version of Ubuntu. That comes out in April. We're going to have 13.4 this April. 
And that's the long-term release, that's the more stable version, and 13.4 is supposedly more stable than this. So maybe that's going to clear out any error messages I'm going to have. I know I could already download an early version of it, I prefer just to get the full-on release, because again, I just don't have the time to tinker with the operating system. When I'm on a computer, generally I just want it to work, because I have a lot of work to get done. So as far as that error message is concerned, the jury's still out on that. I'll reserve judgment for April when I try 13.4. Now, another option I do have is purchasing a Linux laptop. Now, from what I understand, Asus, Lenovo, and Dell all support Linux on their machines. They have actual certified machines that will run Linux, or at least Ubuntu Linux. And I think Lenovo uh, does Red Hat as well. I'm not that well versed in it. Probably you guys know a little bit more about that than I do. But I do know that those companies do certify their hardware for Ubuntu Linux. And I know Dell has, right now, they have a $299 Centrino laptop that you really have to dig for to find, but it's sold with Ubuntu Linux on it. We'll see how long that stays in effect now that Microsoft has invested in Dell since Dell went private. Lenovo does not sell hardware with Linux on it. I do believe Asus does, but again, these things are well hidden on their websites. I had to ask a Dell tech to point me in the right direction of the Dell laptop with Linux on it. And I asked a Lenovo tech and they said they just don't sell Ubuntu loaded up on one of their machines. So as far as I know, if you wanna buy an Ubuntu laptop right now, your options are Dell, System76, and Zareason. Now, if you know of any others, please let me know because I like to shop around. I like this Dell Latitude, but just by virtue of the fact that it doesn't have a multi-touch trackpad, I am probably going to be replacing it sometime soon. So I'm looking for options. The Dell, since it is a Centrino, seems very underpowered. I don't really want that laptop. And both System76 and Za Reason laptops have glossy screens. And as I mentioned at the top of this video, I really don't like glossy screens. So I am still shopping around for options. I might actually get either a Lenovo or a Dell, another Dell with a multi-touch trackpad and put Linux on it myself. Definitely be much cheaper. Although I would like to support System76 and Zareason because they're independent companies and they only deal with Linux. So if they make a laptop with a matte screen, I will buy it. And right now I think their cheapest one is just under $700. So in my previous video, I mentioned that Chromium had a problem. Let me pull up Chromium here. I actually have it already with a web page on here. So the problem was in settings. Now my problem was is that I just wanted the tabs to show up when you opened up Chromium. And in order to do that, I had to select this radio button here, which was open the new tab page, but it would never save. And it was a known bug on Chromium. Well, interestingly enough, after I uploaded week one living in Linux, the very next day, this problem was fixed. And I'm not saying it had anything to do with my video. I'm just saying it was coincidence. And it was actually really cool because it was something that kind of bothered me. It made me have to shift between Chromium and Chrome because one did some things I wanted it to do and the other did other things, but neither of them did both. So mostly right now I'm living in Chromium on this machine. It's pretty much identical to Chrome except when you go to print. You can still print, but the interface is different. Which brings me to the scanning problem I had last week. So I went to the Ubuntu Software Center and I downloaded every scanning program I could find. Now in my first video, I told you guys that setting up the printer was very easy. And I have a combo printer fax scanner. I don't use the fax, I do use the printer a lot and I do use the scanner once a month. The printer works absolutely no problem. It's a little bit slower than printing through Windows, but it still works absolutely no problem. Scanning on the other hand, cannot get it to work. I downloaded four different programs. Actually, I think Simple Scan comes with Ubuntu, so I actually downloaded three, but I tried four different programs. The other one is ScanLite, Scanner Utility, and Xsane Image Scanning Program. 
all four programs were able to recognize that I had my Canon printer, which was also a scanner. So they recognized the network scanner. None of them were able to actually pull off a scan, though. They all looked like they were going to try and scan, but either they just didn't scan or I got an error message. So I have one last ditch effort to try scanning on this, and that's actually to plug the printer slash scanner directly into the computer. Now that's not an ideal situation because I do all my printing and scanning through Wi-Fi, but I just want to see if it's going to work. So in my next video, we're going to tackle that. So the last thing I want to touch on is Google Chrome. Still, I can't find a solution for the problem where you get that confetti artifacting when you play a video. When you play an ad, no problem. But when you're playing a video, there is a problem. Fortunately, there is no problem with that on Chromium and, of course, not on Firefox either. Let me just show you what I'm talking about. In this video, we're going to do an unboxing of the Nexus 4. There you see the uh, volume controls up there. But let me just make this big again. Again, I can't find a solution to this. If any of you guys know, let me know. So... I do also want to mention that I recently just surpassed 8,000 subscribers. I want to thank each and every one of you guys for supporting this channel. Very cool. Hopefully sometime in the next couple of months, I'll be able to put together a giveaway to show my appreciation to you guys. So that's going to do it for this video. If you have any questions or comments, please post them down below. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And as always, if you want to help out my channel, give me a thumbs up or favorite this video. So thanks so much for watching. And I'll see you guys next time.